gallops out of the game quickly and holds his pinnacle spot in the points on the strength of seven early season wins. The Glenn makes him arguably the best road racer of the 90s. Jeff Gordon starts way back at 11th in the same car he carried to a second place finish at Sears Point. Going into this race, Jeff Gordon has a 79-point edge on Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon is the points leader, but there is still no dominant force in the NASCAR Winston Cup Series this year. Jeff has never won on a road course. Jeff Gordon starts 11th. He's never won on a road course. Steve Park will make his Winston Cup debut. Jeff Gordon back there trying to get by Mark Martin. He does. On the left-hander, here's Jeff Gordon now to the inside of Steve Park. And he goes between Park and Jeff Bodine. Steve Park is running in 10th spot. Jeff Gordon took that over. Steve Park started 12. He's able to maintain the same pretty well. But Jeff Gordon came into this event as the leader of the, the point standings. He is currently running in ninth position. Jeff Gordon, the front runner in the NASCAR Winston Cup point standings. Mark Martin second, Dale Jarrett third. And each of these drivers leads in an important category. Jeff has the most wins. Dale Jarrett has accumulated the most bonus points so far this year. But uh, concerning finishes of 30th or worse, Mark Martin leads in that category. He only has three. 20th or worse. 20th or worse, Come on. yeah. Come on, bud. So, uh, Jeff Gordon at the moment running in ninth position. The man's car. Jeff Gordon trying to make a pass on Sterling Marlin. Looks like he's going to be able to do that. So he moves up to sixth. As we saw, the Dusty Wallace got a nice spot go nine. Garrett now loses a couple of positions early as Jeff Gordon runs in sixth position. We can go 37 laps. We're only going to stop once more. That'll be on lap 54. The contact between Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt down in the corner. Oh, and Earnhardt's loose coming off the corner. And Jeff Gordon is all over the back of him trying to get by the Steve Park. Gordon and Earnhardt side by side again in turn one, and Earnhardt again loose coming off. Wow, and Jeff Bodine, I don't think he's trying to dodge or he got hit from the back or what? Yeah, I think he was trying to dodge what he thought was going to happen there. Looks like Earnhardt's car is just slowly going away, Ned. It's not quite as strong as it was early in the early laps. And Gordon, he was good yesterday in practice, and I had a feeling he was going to come towards the front. Yeah. Sterling Marlin dives to the inside trying to get by Bodine. Can't quite make it, Bill Weber. As we had some uh, movement between Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt, and then Jeff Bodine coming off the corner. Well, we see Jeff Gordon, the 24 car, on the inside of Earnhardt, the three. And all of a sudden, Earnhardt goes up, gets on ribble steps, and gets loose and almost turned it sideways, Ned. And Jeff, you're right, Jeff Bodine was dodging the wreck, wasn't he? Yes, he was. And he got loose, got sideways, too. Looked up and got him straightened out being the great race drivers they are. Jeff Gordon started 11th and now 19 laps into the race. He's moved to 5th and he's right on the rear wing, the rear spoiler of Wally Dallenbach. He's going to go down the back stretch or the area between turns 9 and 10. Here is Gordon now going by Wally Dallenbach. Boy, he has a fast race car. Gordon finished second at Sears Point in the only other road race held this year in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. Here comes Gordon. Oh, that's a tough place to pass. Here goes Jeff Gordon around Dale Jerry. And picks up third position. So now we've got Joe Nemechek leading, Bill Elliott running second, and then Gordon and Jerry. That's, two, and that's twice that Jeff Gordon has passed to the left-hander in turn 10. See there, Jeff Gordon moving up on Bill Elliott. Gordon to make the pass down in turn one. Give it to Gordon. He's got some damage to the left front of that car, don't he? That might be when he and Earnhardt got together yeah. earlier. Jeff Bodine made a pit stop in the last uh, lap. Bill Weber has the reason. It was a routine stop, Bob. Routine for Jeff Bodine, I asked Crew Chief. Dale Jarrett trying to work his way back as Jeff Gordon follows. That's 
David Green, the cat car that they're going by. We've got two Pontiacs up front and another one running fifth. Set for the ripple strip. Well, a tough break for Joe. I mean, there's, there's 20, there's 11 corners here. There are 11 corners. That's 22 chances to make a mistake. Yep. It's all, and there's 90 laps to do it, so it's 22 times down. And look at this spot. I mean, this is Jeff Gordon's honey spot right here. He is left hand. He has found him a spot to make a pass. And the way he does it, he gets right up under the tail. If he did, Dale Jarrett right there gets that car loose going in that turn. Jarrett had no alternative but to back off a little bit. Gordon knew it. Went right on by. Jeff Gordon moves up to seventh position. Here comes Ernie Irvin looking to the inside of his teammate Dale Jarrett and picking up another spot. Ernie's been on the move since the green flag came back out. The passage, oh, look at the 24 car, wow. 117.2. And that lap, Jeff Gordon was the fastest car. 117.295 for the seventh place runner at the moment. There's the 24 car. We saw the speed at the line just a couple laps ago. He was the fastest car of all these, everyone out there. But he's caught up to that group of cars now, Then He might not be quite as fast. He was sort of out in the open by himself at that time, which allowed him to get a good lap. But now he's fighting for position as Rusty Wallace tries to take one away from Tim Musgrave. Musgrave in the 16. Wallace yeah, now, in the two. Wallace dives to the inside, and Jeff Gordon trying to follow. Which one is he going to follow? Yeah. <laughs> he don't know. Here are the speeds once again at the line. Well, it looks like Jeff Bodine, the leader, is the fastest. Actually, back there, uh, the four car, Sterling Marlin, maybe. But no, just a little slower than Jeff Bodine. Almost under 16 miles per hour for the 46 car of Wally Dolomack back in the 18th spot, 19th spot. Riding with Rustin Wallace, fourth position, looking back on Jeff Gordon. Now, since the restart, Rusty Wallace has climbed three positions. He was seventh on lap 30, and now six laps later, he's moved up the top. Another driver who's done nicely. Well, those six cars right there are very, very close. And Kenny Wallace probably realizes that if one car gets by, that means five more is going to get by. Instead of checking speed, let's do intervals, huh? Okay. You said it was three seconds back to the third yep. car? Yep. We talked about Kenny Wallace and the great run. And Jeff Gordon is going to sneak a nose in there, too. So Kenny loses two positions. Well, that's very... Yes, he does. And Gordon will go right back to you. back to fourth now. Now, let's see if Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon can catch Jeff Bodine or can Rusty Wallace drive away from Jeff Gordon. Yeah, while all that was going on, those positions were being traded there. Jeff has up his lead to over three and a half seconds, but we'll see if it decreases. an auto zone on track interval that uh, pretty much backs up that statement he picked up a half a second that time by as rusty wallace was trying to get by both kenny wallace and the 30 car of johnny benson and jeff gordon is closed up right on the back bumper of rusty wallace oh he looks on that and he dives to the inside whoa this is turn 11 side by side down the front stretch here heading to turn number one who is going to come back with second position looks like gordon and there's the leader and there's second place it is jeff gordon 
Well, he has a 9.3 average finish in his last six races, the best of any driver. We're talking about Jeff Gordon, who's now second to Jeff Bodine. And I've been looking at the, at the interval between the leader and Jeff Gordon, and Jeff is closing up. It was about four, three, four seconds. It's down now to three and four seconds. So he's closed about a second and a half in the last couple of laps. Oh, you're right. It is getting closer. Let's see how close it is. Oh, wow. It's 2.29 the last lap. This time, 2.67. So, a half second. Jeff Gordon trimmed off that lead that time. Once again, last, last time is 2.67. 2.67 last time. Let's see what it is this time. 2.14, another half second. Trimmed off that lead. Yeah, Gordon and Rusty are coming. That Patty is not quite in complete active labor. They're back in Asheville in the hospital room watching the race. Andy is by her side watching and waiting for his car to maybe have a good run. And I think Andy's heart had to skip a beat a moment ago. <laughs> well, we wish them the best. Dean, he completed lap 50, so he has 33 left. We might... Need to put that in the back of our heads. But he's got 40 to go. So, yeah. So he's got to stop again. It was 1.56 seconds last lap. And it's nah, about the same thing. He missed it. <laughs> about one and a half second advantage for Jeff Bodine over Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. Back with more Bud at the Glen. Gets the lead just as you rejoin us. He took it away from uh, Jeff Bodine in the spot that he has made so many passes today in turn 10. Well, he has found him a sweet spot on that racetrack that that Chevrolet works right on, and he puts her right to the front. Well, now Rusty Wallace has got to get by Jeff Bodine, see if he can continue chasing down the 24 car. Jeff has now led 16 of the 20 races. And here is how it all came together. Right on the back bumper, Jeff Bodine gets him a little bit loose, and there he makes the move. Jumps down on the inside. Nothing Jeff Bodine can do about it, but stay out there and watch that Chevrolet go by. And you can see the nose of that 24 car as he nailed the brakes. And look at he pull away from Jeff Bodine. Jeff Gordon is our sixth leader of the race. And you see the cars moving through the inner loop from the Pennzoil Copter Cam hovering high overhead, Watkins Glen International. Jeff Gordon has about a 2.2 second advantage on Rusty Wallace. Several cars have made pit stops, including the guy who gave up the lead, Jeff Gordon. Also in, Dale Jarrett, uh, Ernie Irvin, among others. Rusty Wallace is now the leader of the race. Michael Walker is in the pits now, John and Reddy. Well, we mentioned Jeff Gordon changed four tires and met an air pressure gentleman in the rear of the car. And now the lead goes to Jeff Gordon. 25 laps to go in this contest, currently being led by Jeff Gordon. As off of corner number 11. What's this all about? What the <laughs> well, Rusty now loses second position also as Jeff Bodine goes to the outside and passes him. What was that all about? Well, you can only pass to the outside, and he was trying to get a run on uh, him coming down to the green flag. Didn't work. We've had nine different leaders today. Gordon is the first runner to win twice in this race. Every bit of racetrack available to him, aren't they? They are. that particular portion of the racetrack. This is between turns 10 and 11. There is the entry to Pitt Road, so he just barely made The crew can't leave Pitt Road to go get him. Well, because he's on a portion of the racetrack. He has not entered Pitt Road yet. The leaders come back once again. They've made a complete lap. And Bob Labonte's car is still slowly, ever so slowly, <laughs> rolling. Yep. And it's sort of downhill. Well, we got a car off in turn one. The leader continues to be Jeff Gordon, and 68 out of the 90 laps have been completed here at Watkins Glen, New York. The leader is that guy. In the very right corner of your screen, Jeff Gordon. That's Jeff Bodine and Rusty Wallace, the next two. In that sand, but uh, 
the other aspect is the safety, and that is much, much more important. Well, there's Ray Everham and the Rainbow Warriors deciding what they're going to do. I can tell you what they're going to do. Yeah. They're going to stay out Nothing. there, aren't they? Nothing. <laughs> right. Sit right there at that same pose. <laughs> track position is the important thing, and you can't have better track position than Jeff Gordon does because he has the lead over Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, and Ted Musgrave. Perfect timing. The green flag comes out, and we're back to racing on lap number 75 with Jeff Gordon getting a pretty good jump here at the start of the race. Boy, he got except for a great jump. He wasn't going to have any situation like Rusty Wallace tried to do on the last restart. That was unbelievable the jump that Jeff Gordon was able to get that time. Yep. There is a bunch of Fords nose to tail behind him. We got a Chevy in the lead and then four Fords chasing. And then the Chevy of Robbie Gordon. There's one spot that I don't think they'll, they will pass Jeff Gordon in going in turn 10. No, he's, he's made all of his passes there today, so I can't imagine that they'll pass him there. So we're going to up the uh, Unical bonus money by another $7,600. $68,400 coming into this race. It hasn't been won since Jeff Gordon did it at Charlotte. Oh, Gordon smoking the tires. Is that tire smoke? that tires? Let's see. Looks like it. Well, a bit of a scare here, though, huh? But Jeff Bodine is closing up. He sure did. He closed up big time there. About a second and a half down to three quarters of a second. Bill has a comment on Jeff Bodine and the restart. Well, an observation, maybe. I'll tell you, the seven bus was furious with the way Jeff Gordon restarted there. Pat Bryson was off that toolbox faster than you can believe in front of the NASCAR official and told him to gotta get on the horn and remind him where the restart place is, which is the NASCAR Winston Cup Series bridge out of turn 11. And uh, it was a uh, vigorous discussion down here, but obviously nothing they could do about it, but they uh, they wanted him to know that they didn't think that restart was exactly the way it should have been. Hmm. But Jeff Bodine right now, folks, I'm telling you, he's closing up on Jeff Gordon big time. Bodine, a couple of car lengths. Trying to make it two in a row here at Watkins Glen. Here's where it happened just a lap ago in Jeff's favorite area of the racetrack. Question is, did he smoke the tire enough to flat spot the tire? And both eye closed up just a couple of car lengths. Of the 77 hundredths of a second last lap, let's see what it is this time. 42 hundredths of a second. So definitely the 24 car has some type of problem. And it might be that 7 car back there, the problem that it is. Yeah. That's right, it could be the 7 car. It's just too fast. And let's don't forget Rusty Wallace. Jerry, any report on Jeff Gordon? Well, Jeff had been complaining that the car was a little bit loose, particularly coming up the S's and up in the long sweeper down at the end of the uh, inner ring. But a moment ago, about, about five minutes ago, Ray Everdam Radio just said, Jeff, there's the cloud you've been waiting for. The car should tighten up. But about two minutes ago, the cloud went away, and now the car has gotten loose again. Ray just now told Jeff, he said, be smooth, be smooth. There are more clouds on the way. Mm -hmm. Well, first his... Since his first win at Charlotte back in 1994, Jeff has won 25% of the races. However, he has gone five races now without a win. His most recent victory was in California. Well, that time he lost, uh, Jeff Bodine lost just a little bit of ground. There you see Musgrave back there trying, is that Dale Jarrett trying to get by Musgrave? No, it's Musgrave trying to get by Dale Jarrett. Uh-huh. And did he it. did it. Yep. Gordon the leader at the moment. The lead that Jeff Garrett Gordon has over second place Jeff Bodine is a matter of car links now. And Rusty Wallace is also right there in third position. Gordon has been able to maintain that top spot despite his problem a few laps ago. Uh, 
There's the first three. So he can hold on here. Back up front, it remains. Now it's back to almost three quarters of a second. The interval that Jeff Gordon has over Jeff Bodine. Brakes locked up on that 24 car, and he's just he's been very careful with the brakes now, so he doesn't do that again. And he's now starting to use them a little bit more, a little bit more. And there now we see that the interval between first and second is back up to one and three quarter seconds. A cup car on a road course. Jeff Gordon makes his tenth start today, although he has never won. He has had four top five finishes in his last road course starts. His first win, as we possibly predicted at the beginning of the show, could come right here today. Bill Weber? Well, Jerry Punch, this could be one. Watch Dale Jarrett. Here is Robbie Gordon, I mean, uh, Jeff Gordon, coming out of the turn and down the back stretch, headed for the interlude once again. When we saw that puff of smoke come from Jeff's car a few laps ago, Jeff Bodine was able to close in, and the interval was four-tenths of a second, but look how that has increased since then. Back here on lap 83, it's up to 1.7 again. We're running a little bit over. We were supposed to be off the air at 3.30 Eastern time, but uh, the great American... There's the first three cards. Jeff Gordon crosses the line, and there are now three laps to go at Watkins Glen. And yet, you know the fastest car in the race. Watching back there for fifth and sixth, there's Gordon off the corner once again, headed down for turn number 10. There's a slow car, Hunt Strickland. No through there, keeps going. White flag is out for Jeff Gordon. One more lap to go. Chevy has recorded seven wins so far. And guess what? He's won all of them. He's won all of them. That's correct. And he may have another win here today. He's got a couple of Fords chasing him. Jeff Bodine and Rusty Wallace. But the biggest advantage he's got, he's got about a second and a half advantage on them, guys. If he doesn't make a mistake or anything happened to that car, he has not Here is Gordon, headed down for turn for the uh, inner loop, I get No, turn 10. Turn 10. He's the just left hand that he loves so much. He made a couple of passes there today and drives by it for the final time. Now he heads for turn number 11, the final turn on the course. Jeff Gordon has won the bud at the Glen. His eighth win of the 1997 season, his 27th career victory, and now it's complete. Hey, Ron Dillon, he's sitting up, was running 13th, sitting in the interloop, dead in the, uh, dead in the water. Jerry Punch. Well, Ray Everham, it took a while, 10 starts on a road course, but finally you got one. Congratulations. No, well, thank you. You know, you got to attribute that to a great driver and a great team. You know, he searched for a gear ratio that he wanted. Put it in yesterday, and uh, he made a great time. I want to say hi to Rick and Linda, Papa Joe, get well, and uh, want to thank God for giving us the opportunity to do this. And Patty and uh, Andy Petrie giving birth right now, I hope. Yeah, hopefully. Good luck to Andy and Patty. i got to ask you, $50,000-plus Winston bonus for winning it today, uh, winning and being the point leader. Congratulations. Win number eight. Well, I didn't hear the last part of that, Jerry, but we sure appreciate what Winston does. And, you know, we really want to win that championship. We want that championship for Rick Hendrick this year and, and all the people at Hendrick Motorsports. It's real important to us. We're trying to stay focused and get it. All right, Ray Everham, the winning crew chief. He will head up to victory lane. He will, he will actively, he will run to victory lane as Chevrolet has now won eight in 1997. All eight coming from Jeff Gordon. But the 81 car was totally unrelated. Well, Jeff Gordon has won that Winston bonus four times in 1996 and five times a season, racking up $425,120. How about that? Jeff Gordon wins again here in 1997, securing his spot atop the NASCAR Winston Cup point standings. And now the cycle is complete. He has won on a short track, won on a super speedway, and now he has won on a road course. The yellow arrows indicate those who led a lap. The double yellow there at Jeff Gordon's name indicates that he led the most laps, and so he's going to walk out of here with just about as much 
point advantage as you can get. Now the point standings as we head to Michigan International, a 109 point advantage Jeff Gordon has over Mark Martin. McDonald's Winter Circle interview, here's Bill Weber. And we kidded with Jeff Gordon before the race about a Gordon going to victory lane. You lead the points, you got the money, and Jeff, you won on a road course. Congratulations. I I'm speechless. I, I really don't know what to say. Uh, this is this means so much to me and this entire team. Win our first road course race. Uh, today was just our day. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for giving us such a, a great day and, uh, and giving me such a great team to work with and great race car. Hey, to drink at home. Uh, we know you're doing good, buddy. And uh, we love you and we miss you. I want to thank DuPont Automotive Fishes, uh, Pepsi, and uh, Quaker State Chevrolet. I mean, this is a great day for us. Jeff Gordon with a great day and a great win at Watkins Glen. And we'll see what he and the other NASCAR Winston Cup drivers can do next Sunday at Michigan Speedway. We will be there for the 400-mile race. So we'll see you then. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's go to tennis.